Hi everybody, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today's tutorial was never meant to be, but nevertheless, I put the camera up and I thought I'd take you on the journey. It was meant to be a cleaning and sorting out day in my studio, and then I got to these four cupboards that have lived with me for a very long time. They came from the house originally, the previous owners left them. They were in a kid's bedroom. Great storage, that's why I've reused them here in the studio. Um, but nevertheless, they're very drab and dreary and I've always intended to do something with them. Um, but now I'm gonna take you on that journey with me. So let's take a closer look at the cabinets. As you can see, these four cabinets really do look worn and tired. Um, the melamine has gone yellow. Also, the two cabinets are on top of each other. This is how they are screwed together. This is how I have them in my workshop. So I'm gonna work on them as two separate entities with decoupage. So we're gonna use decoupage papers today, two different brands. We're gonna be using Mint by Michelle and Posh Chalk Deluxe papers. They are different types of papers. They will go on in different ways. I'm not really comparing the two. I absolutely love both brands. It's just that the designs, I can see them working really beautifully together in my workshop. Once all of the hardware was removed from these cupboards, I set about filling all of the random holes across the two pieces with a two-part wood filler. This filler does go off rather quickly, it goes off in about five minutes ready for sanding. Whilst I'm waiting for the wood filler to go hard, ready to be sanded, I'm gonna share with you the two images that I've decided to go with. This is a landscape, this is the Mint by Michelle um, decoupage paper. It's very Turner-esque. I love it, it's very my thing. And the other one is a lovely portrait. This is the Posh Chalk um, Deluxe paper. And she is very hand-painted. Well, the pair of these images are very hand-painted. That's why I've chosen them to go together. Um, I love them because they're kind of whimsical and I think they're gonna look beautiful sat next to each other on these cabinets. Before moving on to painting and decoupaging these four cabinets, or two as it may be, um, I'm going to use a really good undercoat primer because this is melamine. It's kind of that material that really doesn't like paint. It kind of pushes, repels paint almost. So this is the product I'm using today, PX4. You can just see it underneath all of the drippiness of the can. I used this in my kitchen over plastic. It was amazing and it still is good today. So do your homework. There's many different types of this product on the market and you really just need to belt and braces, give it a good foundation for your paint treatment. The two cabinets have had a fair few hours of drying time and I'm gonna give them another coat of white paint. Both of these decoupage papers really do like a white or very pale background. Um, and you might say, well, it is white and I know it is white, but I'm gonna use chalk paint to create some character and some depth. So this is my canvas coat and I'm gonna use old white. 
any what way. Because the two papers have got um, lots of brush strokes and marks in there, this will really help when it comes to blending the pattern away. So all I'm gonna do is add um, one coat of um, old white, any what way, and allow some brush strokes to be there. And also, the other thing about this is it's adding the chalk paint will be um, porous, so this will really help when it comes to um, the adhesion of the decoupage papers. So I'm working on the flat now and I'm just laying out the paper to where I think it's best suited. I'm kind of keeping that in mind's eye of where I want it to be. I'm going to wrap this round this side so I can carry on the pattern. Um, with the mint by Michelle paper, I'm going to do something that I haven't done before um, and I'm going to scrunch it up. Um, and the reason for that is because I've got lots of lines in it where it's been folded and I don't want them to show through on my overall finished um, project. So this is something new to me. I've never done this. I've always tried to get the perfectly smooth finish, but I'm gonna pull this back out, smooth it back out, and then we're gonna work from there. Don't panic at this stage when you see all of these creases in your beautiful um, decoupage paper. It does look a hot mess, I know it does, but it will come good once we start using the decoupage medium. Whatever you choose to use, you could use um, Annie Sloan decoupage medium, Mod Podge, um, maybe not PVA, it's kind of quite thick. Here's another great product. Um, this is a Posh Chalk um, infuser. This I find probably the best for this kind of treatment. It's kind of thin, it's easy to apply. Um, with this um, paper, Mint by Michelle's, we're gonna start working from one side and laying the paper out smooth to the other side. So what you can see here is me taking quite some time to get this first section of paper nice and smooth and level. And also I have been using a water spray, an atomizer on the back of this paper. It slightly softens the paper and makes it much easier to um, apply to the surface and smooth out. I'm using my flat palm brush just to tuck into all of the details. There's a slight raised lip around the cupboard doors and I'm pushing into that with the brush and my hands, smoothing everything nice and smooth. Now I'm moving on to the second half of my paper. I'm just applying a liberal coat of infuser and spraying the back of the paper again. 
I've got another brush here, which is a pointy brush. That's just to help me get into all of those grooves on the indentations of the cabinetry. The Mint by Michelle paper went on absolutely like a dream. Less wrinkles than I expected, actually. It smoothed out really well, and I actually think the crunching of the paper really helped smooth out, strangely, even though I was going for that look. One thing that I did do is I created an anomaly here. I overworked it on this, uh, on this corner. So what I've done is stole a piece of the paper from that corner and just patched it in because that's on the front. Um, not that it's going to be an issue because I'm going to paint in all of the background. I'm going to add to the overall image and soften the sky and the ground, foreground at the bottom. So that's uh, not a big problem to me because it was on the corner. I'm going to move on to the um, Posh Chalk um, Deluxe paper. And I've just been thinking about placement of this. There's two handle holes here that I'm going to reuse those holes for the project. So I don't want to place her too low and end up with two handles in her eyes. So we're gonna move her oik up and it's gonna be somewhere around her neckline, which is probably a little bit more forgiving. I'm gonna paint in the lower part of um, the overall image. And also with this paper, there is a, a, a title and edges to it that we're gonna to need to remove. So I'm just gonna take some water with a paintbrush and then fray the edges of this paper before applying. Just go along the edge of the paper. With this being more like a tissue paper, um, it really absorbs through. So you can kind of just do that line, let it absorb all the way through. And then you can go with your thumb and forefinger. You can just literally um, fray the edges. This is another great way of blending the edges away. So we can remove all of this paper. Don't worry as well about it being wet, the paper, it will dry back ex exactly as it was. Um, and don't worry if you go right into the pattern because we are gonna paint this back in. Ultimately, we're gonna do a color match and we're gonna blend it away. So go all the way around the paper in this manner. Unlike the Mint by Michelle, I've kept it kind of just straight as I've gone round. You could do the same thing, but I've kept it straight and I've used a lot of infuser over the top, adding texture, which I will carry on with, um, with the paint as I go over. So I will paint texture over the top of that paper and on the pattern. So there's lots of little tricks that you can apply to make it look like it's your original artwork. Um, that's the idea. It solves the issues of um, creating your own artwork. So that's my paper all the um, border edge frayed off and it's good to go. These jaggy edges I'm not going to worry about because we're going to paint over this as we blend her in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in one shot. So wish me luck. I'm gonna put my border of infuser at the top here, um, just to level everything off. Remember, I've got those holes to kind of contend with, which are gonna be one on her neck, um, somewhere up here on her, so that's good. So I know that I've got about 10 centimeters where I can start to apply the infuser. 
So in for a penny, in for a pound, we're gonna put this one strip of infuser here and then we're gonna cover the whole piece and then we're gonna smooth it down. A little bit different. Michelle's papers, you need to take your time and work it across the piece. With this um, decoupage paper, it's kind of a little bit different. You can kind of go in one fell swoop. You do get a couple of attempts at peeling back, um, but it is uh, more precarious as it gets wetter. The, and Michelle's paper is a little bit stronger. So let's go for it. I have two brushes. I have two posh chalk brushes. This is a um, paddle brush. They're kind of like palm brushes. I don't know what the name of them are, but they're both synthetic. One's a smoother and one's to apply the infuser very quickly. Um, I've used their small chalk, uh, posh chalk brush on, on Michelle's paper. This was a little bit more directional. This is a great brush to also work with, but I'm gonna use the bigger brush now. So we can just kind of um, spread that up, like so. We can pe peel off a little bit wonky there. We'll go over there, I'm happy with that. Make sure it's nice and square. This side's now not square. Look, you can get a little bit of give in these papers. It is kind of a one shot really, kind of get it right the first time. That's lovely. Right, I'm happy. That's where we're at. Now I'm going to take this up and over like so and then we're going to give this all a quick coat of infuser underneath and we're going to work down a bit like wallpapering but without pasting the back of the paper. With this brush you can use it very quickly, speedily, to get lots of infuser on and spread out very quickly. You do need to work quick with this because both things are absorbent. The chalk paint's absorbent and the paper is. So it's kind of sucking the moisture out of the infuser straight away. So work very quickly. That's why I'm using a big brush, making sure I get a full coat coverage of the infuser. If we leave areas, you're gonna get little um, anomalies where there's bubbles. So work quick, get it on, bring her down. And we're going to just kind of stretch it to the corners. This side I'm still not happy with. So I'm going to go from the centre and work up and out. That's better. Lovely. Much better. There I go again with this side. Am I going to lose out? If I do, I'll have to paint it back in, won't I? straight through the middle and out to the sides. There's a little bit of stretch in the give in the paper, that's good. This lovely paddle brush is really great for smoothing out the paper. A little bit dry on that top section, so I'm going to go 
back with more infuser. That's it. You can really stretch it out. Lovely. All right. May just top up with some more infuser just in case it's dried out underneath. We've got to that connection now. Yeah, just a little, little tad more infuser just to make sure it's not dried out. Perfect. Drain it back down over my lump. I'm just pushing into the edges of the cupboard. And the same underneath. Spreading outwards. From the center. So it can be a little bit precarious on beginning. Um, once you've got it, you've got it. Um, it's just about getting things level, lining things up, taking your time over the first section and then smoothing down. Like I said, both papers are very different. This one is a little bit more fragile. The Michelle's one's a bit more, um, there's a bit more strength in it, but you need to take a bit more time over it. This one you can kind of go a little bit quicker. There's a few little crinkles and creases in there, but I don't mind them because it's kind of blending the two papers together. Um, so with the crunch of the screwed up paper on the other one, So with this one, I'm gonna leave this to dry underneath and then I'll do my top coat once I've, um, once this is dried, rather than adding more top coat now, because the paper's more fragile, um, if you add more moisture to the surface just now, you may have little accidents. I did have one on the Michelle paper because I absolutely saturated the paper, but with this, I'm gonna allow just a little time for um, the paper to dry on underneath and then go back with the, another top coat of infuser and then we can crack on with the exciting part blending the paint work into the whole cabinet So as you will have seen, that is my base coat of chalk paint, filling in the sky and the foreground and wrapping around the sides. Um, this is literally a base coat. I'm throwing the paint on. I'm kind of doing it loosely with the brush, um, adding lots of different tones and colors. I'm kind of painting by numbers. I'm finding the colors that live next to, on the decoupage paper, next to the blank background and extending the pattern. I'm using my imagination to grow that pattern. Um, I have got finer details to do on the ground, on the tree. I'm even gonna paint over the actual decoupage paper. So I'm gonna add some more highlights into those trees. I'm gonna brighten those trees up a little bit and it will really embed the paper into the new background. So we're gonna move on now to uh, this young lady and I'm gonna create the sky at the top um, and some of these tones and add in some of her background as well and wrap around the sides. And then we'll go back for the finer details again. So onward and upward.
So I'm going to extend this bit of, I think it's a, a ruchy kind of ribbon down and then the dress is going to come over it. I'm kind of making the pattern up. Um, I'm just adding some pattern further down. I think I'm going to stop because I think it kind of travels sort of behind her dress, I think. I'm kind of spreading that in. Um, as I go along, this is kind of, this is primer red that I'm using. It's kind of a, a, a lovely, a lovely sort of dirty red, I think, kind of goes with it. There's probably a bit more depth in there. I can add a little bit of on flare to this to make it more browny. And as you can see, I'm just kind of going over. There's a bit more brown here. A little bit of brown on there. And I'm going to go over this corner and wrap it around. I know it kind of travels over. And I kind of think it just kind of ruches round. That's what I'm expecting. And then the dress to fit in from the side. So I'm going to add a bit more here. And then the dress I'm going to get to come over here and I'm going to add a frill to the bottom of the dress, I think. white textures over the top afterwards. That's nice. Little little areas here and there. Um, and then we can paint in. I might have to paint the dress in and then paint the red back over the top. But for here, I know that I wanted a, a nice connection. So I'm going to dry that off and then put map out the dress. up some on here. This is um, old white with a little bit of Provence and I think a little bit of graphite in there just to kind of make it a little bit more grey. A little tiny bit of, it's a bluey grey colour and let's see, yeah look at that, it's kind of nice. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to add this. I've got to check how big I want this to be because I don't think I want it too, too big. I think we're going to do, we're going to map it out. So there it goes there. I think we're going to have some sort of frilly train that goes over kind of all the way along there. I think, I don't know. So let's just map it in. I'm going to go up to this frill and then we're going to paint the frill back in.
So I'm just mixing up this muddy brown taupey colour, graphite and on fleur, just to yeah, wiggle some of them in for this pad. It's very loose, this sort of, you take it around the corner. Just trying to marry in what's already there. going to go over some of the areas on the paper and that kind of makes that a little bit more like the original wrapping it around the corner and what we're going to do is pick up water spray and we're just going to soften that out. I've got my rag here. So what we've got here is um, Amsterdam Green mixed with some Oxford Navy to make a real dark forest green and I'm picking up fur now and I've, I've got a brush and I'm just kind of tapping it in um, here and there any what way to make the foreground full of beautiful bright colour. This is like the light catching the shrubbery at the front. We're going to do the same again on the tree at the top but only in the areas where I think the light's going to catch it over the top of the tree. over the edge of this path we can kind of soften it away and it travels a little bit round here it actually brightens the image up so I'm really happy with that right we're now going to go just randomly on the tops of this tree where the light might catch areas kind of going over the sky, which kind of just soft set, softens everything up. Really does add that sort of depth into the image. And that lovely yellow in the original image, right deep there, I think that really works well. But I'm not get, getting everywhere, I'm just doing little areas, which I think just, the top of the tree just adds. come back in for some Amsterdam green on this side just to layer it up So you can see it's really easy to kind of blend away the decoupage. The main body of the image is right in the middle. 
and we're just adding this vibrant green just to richen up the colours. I'm really happy with this guy. I'm going to leave it really loose and haphazard. Um, I'm not going to affect the middle much more. I'm just going to kind of go with that and get this all waxed up. I might even use a top coat, a shiny top coat. Cut out the, cut out all of the um, joins. Wow, what a long day it has been. So this morning when I entered the studio, it was just to give it a good old clean round. I hadn't intended to do a brand new decoupage tutorial. I'm really hoping that you've taken something away from these two different kinds of papers and learnt a little bit of how easy these are to use. Um, there's just one less thing to do on both projects and that is give them a top coat. I'm probably gonna do this tomorrow with wax and put some really nice handles back onto the two projects. And all that's left to say is thank you for joining me. I've really enjoyed the process. If you have and you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell for future projects. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. See you next time. So I thought it was only fair that I would share with you what I am doing the next day. And here you can see me using a blade to cut closely round the door to release the decoupage paper. And I'm also going to be tidying up the edges of the cupboard doors. There's a lot of work tidying up the edges, um, just sanding away, smoothing off and colour blending all the way round the edges of the door. Also, what you can see here, there's a little lip of paper that overlaps where there was a gap. I'm just peeling that forward and sticking back down to the edges of the door. And then I can go from the inside and color match all of my colors. Here you'll see it again. I'm just peeling it back using the infuser and sticking it back down. Adding decorative handles to the two cupboards. And I did go with a top coat rather than a wax. I've gone with the infuser over the top of the two pieces. I just thought this was probably better for being in my workshop because I'm always throwing paint around. And that shiny look kind of makes these two beautiful paintings look like old masters. Thank you so much again for joining me. I've really enjoyed today's tutorial. <laughs>